What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and today I'm back to talk about Warhammer 40k. So in this one, I'm going to be going over the differences and the similarities between a lot of the forces of the Imperium. Because lately I've been seeing that we got a lot of new people into the hobby, and they're getting confused between the Space Marines, the Adeptus Custodes, the Grey Knights, and how... Like the gene seed works, who has gene seed, who doesn't, who can become a space marine and stuff like that. So I just wanted to give you just a quick overview of who's who and what's what of the forces of the Imperium. Starting from the Guardsmen all the way up to the Primarch. And might as well just say the Emperor at that point. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. So at the lowest ranks of the Imperium, you have none other than just the humans, the grunts, the soldiers, the forces that make up the Astra Militarum. Now, I don't like using the term human, because technically these aren't humans. Like, the Astra Militarum, they don't come from uh, Earth, or Terra for that matter. Every planet has their own recruits. Um, that's why we have such differences between like the Catachans, the Vostroyans, the Cadians, and stuff like that. So there's different aspects to each regiment of Astra Militarum, and because of that we have different subsections be between each one. Like we have Ratlings, Ogrins, Beastmen, stuff like that. And um, they're all menial grunts, like the Imperium tends to win war because they have so many of these disposable people that they can just throw at Chaos, at Xenos, or at other planets that are going rogue against them. And these are just basically unaugmented, or if they do have some type of augmentations, it's very minimal. Maybe a bionic eye, maybe a metallic hand, the robotic arm, something like that. Um, it's really not much. Usually the Commissars and the higher ranking officers are the ones that have the cybernetics, such as like Commissar Yarrick, R.I.P., who had the uh, augmented eye and he had the power claw put into his severed arm. So there could be different instances. Um, some go with more augmentation, some less, but all in all, you're not going to see much change there. Moving up from here, I guess you have the Sisters of Battle, which are also on, for the most part, unaugmented humans or soldiers from different sects. And they all go to the Scola Progenia, which is basically a military school, and they get trained to become these warriors. At first, they were the Brides of the Emperor, um, who were basically just warrior women from a certain planet that Goj Van Dyer took as his own retinue. And from there, they became the Daughters of the Emperor, and they became the Sisters of Battle that we know now. They do don much better armory, um, armor weapons equipment than that of the uh, Astra Militarum, where the Astra Militarum has like the last gun. The Sisters of Battle do use bolters and such. Uh, they also have power armor, very similar to that of Space Marine. Like they have different ranks, so obviously you're gonna see like better power armor. Um, some actually have even augmentations to them but we don't really see that too often with the sisters of battle and then we move on to the space marines the space marines are aspirants humans or i guess people from certain planets that have undergone different types of rituals um challenges to be chosen to become a space marine and these aspirants probably won't become one because it's very rare very difficult to ascend to become a space marine because they have to pass psycho indoctrination as well as the gene seed implantation process. So gene seed comes from a primarch. It is essentially what creates a space marine. Gene seed is put into an aspirant. They get different types of biological augmentations such as like two hearts. Um, and it just really messes with their physiology a lot to the point that sometimes the body cannot change or adapt to this change and they will die right then and there which the gene seed will then be taken back and then used to the next aspirant. This is a very difficult process to do, and that is why gene seed factories are so important and why chaos often attacks these factories, because if they can't produce space marines, then that's going to be a pretty big blow to the overall war machine of the Imperium. So space marines are aspirants who undergo the process of psycho-indoctrination as well as the gene seed implantation to become a space marine. 
Um, Space Marines have the iconic bolter, chainsword, power sword, power armor, different types of weapons, armories, vehicles, anything you can think of, they probably have it at their disposal. However, there's only roughly about a thousand Space Marine chapters at any time, um, so there's not very many of them. But we know how devastating and how effective they can be when waging war. The next step from there, well not even a next step, I guess I will go into an offshoot, and that is the Grey Knights. The Grey Knights don't have Gene Seed from the Primarchs. It is heavily implied and rumored that they have the Gene Seed from the Emperor himself. At first, these were Space Marines plucked from different chapters to be chosen to become Grey Knights, um, due to Garo and the Inquisition and all that stuff. And they're very powerful psychers, so they're meant to fight fire with fire. They fight against the monstrosities of the warp, chaos demons, stuff like that. And they go through the same gene seed implantation process as all the others to become Grey Knights. Um, they don't have any offshoots of their chapters, so they don't have any successor chapters that we know of. It was rumored that perhaps the Exorcists were, but that was confirmed that they were not. That they were just space marines that were successors of the imperial fists so as of this point there is no official successor to the gray knights all the gray knights are very secretive up until the reveal of gilliman coming back to life and gilliman choosing that no longer were they being kept a secret they are now fighting in the imperium alongside other space marines without having to mind wipe them or just outright kill entire populations who saw who know of the existence of the gray knights then we continue to the Adeptus Custodes. The Adeptus Custodes are the pinnacle of a warrior. They were created by the Emperor himself, and each Custodi is not a space marine. They don't have gene seed. Psycho, alchemies, physiological, uh, basically miracles is what created these Custodes. They are taken from birth or very, very early in their life, and they are trained extensively. Their bodies are genetically altered to the point where they're almost a whole different entire being. They are faster, stronger, bigger, tougher, smarter than any space marine. It is said that even a Primarch can have difficulty fighting against an Adeptus Custodi, and perhaps maybe even a squad of Custodes could take out a Primarch if it came to that. Um, so that just shows you exactly how strong, how powerful these guys are. A uh, thousand Custodes took on, I believe it was like a hundred thousand orcs, and only three fell. So the might, the power of these Adeptus Custodes is indeed legendary. Each one has the best armor, the best weaponry, the best training, um, and they are like nigh unstoppable. There have been instances in the lore where certain foes have taken them out, which may or may not make sense, but again, like, just because they're crazy powerful warriors doesn't mean they will never die. Like, they do make mistakes as minuscule as it can happen. It is a possibility. Um, but whereas the Space Marines fight best in a group, such as like a pack of wolves, the Adeptus Custodes fight best one-on-one, -on -one, such as like a lion. Um... So yeah, they are very powerful, very devastating. They were chosen to be the Emperor's bodyguards for that specific reason. And then we come to a supplement to the Adeptus Custodes, and that is the Sisters of Silence. The Sisters of Silence are all blanks, meaning they're all gnolls, meaning they have no soul, and they are basically the antithesis to the warp. If there is a Sister of Silence around you, you will feel unease, you will feel uh, just uncomfortable maybe even aggressive for some reason and that is because they're soulless they should not exist but yet they do this to any normal person is just exactly what i described but if they're standing next to a demon a chaos uh, psyker of that extent it could be even painful to the point where they get banished back into the immaterium so these warrior women who have taken vows of silence are so instrumental to being next to the custodi because it is said that the custodi can take on any threat in the galaxy however they do take on you know chaos and demons and stuff like that and that is where the sisters of silence will kind of help bring the demon back to their level where they can take them out so yes they make a devastating combination they are very powerful they do have some really powerful equipment weapons and tactics and then we move on 
to the strongest being, and that is the Emperor. He is a psyker, a perpetual, a warrior, a shapeshifter. And this guy has been alive for a long, long time. He's basically what has shaped humanity to become who they are now. And he has taken on threats unimaginable and come out on top, such as the Catan. He could have killed Horus if he wanted to, but since he was his favorite son, he has led him to make many mistakes. We'll see how exactly that becomes canonized in the new Siege of Terror novels that are to come out shortly. But this guy is the pinnacle of humanity. He is able to just utterly decimate entire armies with just his psychic might. And if you want more lore, more information on him, I'll give you guys a link to the strongest feats of the Emperor. It's a video that I did a few months back. really showcases just how strong this guy is. So hopefully that helped differentiate and kind of set straight who has Gene Seed, who doesn't, what's the pecking order of the forces of the Imperium. There were a few other offshoots that I obviously left out. Um, the different ranks within the uh, Imperium, such as like Space Marines, Primaris Space Marines, which I guess I should count them. So Primaris Space Marines really quickly are an upgrade to a Space Marine. They were genetically augmented by Belisarius Call, who made them stronger, faster, tougher, and they have slightly better weapons and equipment. So think of them as being Space Marines 2.0, version 2, but they're very akin to that. Still weaker than the Custodes, but slightly stronger than the Firstborn Marines. So thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any other questions, if you guys think I messed up or misspoke somewhere, please let me know. Because again, I want this video to be very informative for new people coming into the hobby and just kind of like a refresher for those who have been here for a little bit longer. So thanks for listening. And as always, it's been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.